Now, I remember taking Maddie, who is now my seven-year-old, to Golden Coins, which is Kendall Coins hockey camp last year. And I love the fact that they put all the girls in Blackhawks jerseys, but put Coin, a female's name, on the back of the Blackhawks jersey, right? And I thought, I wonder if one day that'll be normal. I did think about this the other day. I realized that I've never had a female boss in my career. But at the same time, I had female colleagues, you know, equals. And I mean, the bonds and the friendship I developed with those women, you know, 25 years on, I am still close to all of them because we knew that this was what we wanted and we knew we could do it. Now we're all at a point in our career where we can help others. Were there things that you thought because you hadn't had a female boss that you wanted to address once you were a supervisor? So I think it was more about recognizing talent and being able to give them opportunities. Yeah, I think that's part of it, using the capital that you have. And when you want to speak up about whether it's a person or a policy, we have both the opportunity but the obligation and the responsibility to do that now. And it's recognizing that. And it can be a little scary sometimes because it is a bit of a transition from I am lucky to be here to I need to create space for others to come now and join me. We're coming up on the 50th anniversary of Title IX. When I think about women that I looked up to, I turned on the television and Robin Roberts was on SportsCenter. I wanted to be a sports agent and nobody told me I couldn't. But seeing Robin Roberts on there let me know it could be a safe place for women. Of course, all the representation matters. Yeah, Robin is amazing. She's one of those people you look up to for various reasons, not just the role she had in SportsCenter, but then she goes to Good Morning America, and that also says respect people who have sports backgrounds, which I feel like wasn't always the case either. Mm -hmm. There are so many people who worked so hard to get the rights before you, you need to know that that has to be maintained. But it's really interesting when I think about Title IX because I don't know that I was paying attention to know the doors that were being opened because my parents were always so like, you can do whatever you want. And so it never felt like there were any barriers and it wasn't until really when I got into actually the workforce where I started to see, you know, there were lots of females and then all of a sudden there weren't females, all of a sudden you're the only one at the table. And so it was just one of those things like I never thought about it until I was actually older. Yeah, it's funny, I mentioned that I, I didn't have any female mentors, but I had female role models. When I worked at the U.S. Soccer Federation, I worked directly with the 99ers. So my role models were Julie Foudy and Mia Hamm and Brandi Chastain. And I watched those women overcome significant obstacles and challenges to go on and do amazing things and they did it as teammates. They were amazing women to watch and to be around. So similar to that, as far as you know, Robin Roberts, I had those role models. There are those who are very comfortable using their voice, but there are those that aren't. And so part of my mission and charge is to really say, okay, let's find ways for you to use your voice, but not say, let's find ways to use your voice, but create environments for them to use it and then give them feedback afterwards. I'm somebody who would use my voice and then there would be this void. And all of a sudden I would make all of these stories in my head like, oh God, I, that must have been horrible. It must have been the worst idea ever. Yeah, all of a sudden nobody says anything and then five minutes later in the same meeting, somebody says the same idea and usually it's a man and everybody's just like, oh yeah, that's a great idea, let's run with that. And you're like, wait a minute, didn't I just kind of say that? When I lived in LA, my boss and I were in a meeting and there was a gentleman in there who kind of did the same thing. And what I loved more than anything else was his advocacy for me. He was the one who stepped up and said something. And so when I think about it not only being us as women that stand up for each other, but it's also our, our counterparts who are males. And that meant like so much for me in the sense that like here's someone who saw something and said something. Absolutely. I've heard a lot from some of our younger women that come in. They feel like they have to tolerate and put up with things or else they won't get another shot. And 
I, I hate that, and I, and I hope we don't have that at the Blackhawks because I want to make sure people understand, like, life's too short for that. If you are working for us at the Blackhawks, it's because you have something very valuable that you need to contribute, right? You're not here because we're trying to check boxes on people of color or female. You have something really important to offer, and we've chosen you to be a part of it. People think leadership equates to your title. And so when we talk about advocating for yourself and young voices advocating for yourself, you don't have to have a title to advocate for yourself. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm just still an employee over here, so I'm still learning from leaders like you every day. But it does sit with me when you hear somebody say, if they have an idea, I'm not going to leave them hanging. Mm -hmm. What's really interesting, Jamie, is I, I think about it, like you're married and, and you have you know five children. Mm -hmm. God bless you. And I think about, like, it's, it's really interesting because, you know, the, the rest of us, and, and I, I don't know everybody's status, but, like, we're not married and we don't have children. And it doesn't mean that in order to be successful or to get to this senior level that you have to choose that path. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's good for people to see diversity even amongst women themselves. Mm -hmm. I think especially in a manager's role when there is still the traditional construct of the second shift, as we talk about where women are expected even now to take a lot of the home workload on. I know a lot of times not having a manager who understands that piece of it can be a hurdle. So to have people in higher roles like that is important. had a speaker come in and just talk about how do you value yourself? How do you advocate for yourself? You know, things that I, I said, first of all, I would have loved to have had that in my 20s and in my 30s, but then the vulnerability that they had saying, I have imposter syndrome, do any of the rest of you? And, and it was like a chorus of yes, yes. And then there was support where it's like, okay, how can we address this? It's fascinating you bring up imposter syndrome because at one of the companies that I worked with, we actually had a specialist come in and actually talk to us about what imposter syndrome was. Mm -hmm. And we did this quiz. And what we found at the end is the women who were kind of the real high achieving women had really, really high scores on imposter syndrome which was fascinating because the women that you look at that are really high achieving, that come across as very confident, they do struggle. Our generation and generations previous were taught to be humble and then that turns into mm -hmm. asking yourself, oh, am I making the right decision? Yeah, I mean, and I think about when I've interviewed, I have a hard time saying I. Like, I did this, because it, it always comes out as, well, we did this, mm -hmm. or and it's like, you do have to kind of, at some point in time, force yourself to take credit. See, I just don't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> you should take that on the road, then. And, and, uh... I, mean, I think I've always felt pretty confident, but, but humble enough to be like, and maybe because I started in consulting. So it was actually a positive thing that sometimes mm -hmm. you might fail, that sometimes you thought you had the best idea in the room and you didn't, but you learned something. So if I go into an interview, I have no problem saying, here is how I contributed. It could have been team success, and in most cases was team success, mm -hmm. but I can talk about how I contributed to that. And so when we talk about advocating for yourself and young voices advocating for yourself, you don't have to have a title to advocate for yourself. Yeah, I think that for, for me when I think about leadership, you start to manage people, like nobody's giving you like tools. You're just like kind of handed people and you're mm -hmm. like, here, this is your responsibility now. Even now at this stage, I'm constantly learning, right? And every team that I've managed is completely different. I like to tell people, whether you just graduated from college or you have the highest title in the organization, like everybody's a leader, because you're influencing somebody every day. Whether that's your peer that you're working with, whether that's your manager, whether that's a client, you're an influencer, right, in some way. And so for me, I think it's really important to start to teach people very early on. So what type of leader do they want to be? And I, I think for me, it has changed. As my life has changed, the way I have led has changed. But I do every year have like a leadership statement to say, well, what kind of leader do I want to be this year? And then do I live up to that? I mean, it's kind of like, you know, they always say in sports, I mean, it a coach usually figures out how they need to manage a particular player. I mean, I've had to learn that in my career because I'm very direct. I'm like, please come tell me in 10 words or less what it, what it is you need and why you need it. <laughs> but I've had to even change my management style 
because of how I am and being considerate of whomever is exchanging an idea with me. From a more personal standpoint, something that I feel strongly about is like, again, I started 1993 in sports. I don't, I would never want a young woman to have to experience some of the stuff that I had to, to go through. For me, that's the important thing, is, is trying to create environments that, you know, young women at this point in time don't have to experience some of the stuff that we probably had to experience. I'm curious to know what kept you going and what keeps you going. I, you know, for me, I just, it was, I love sports. My first year out of college, I worked at a bank. And after a year, I was like, oh, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. And then I volunteered at the World Cup here in Chicago and because I knew I could be happy and I could enjoy it. And it, so I think it's still that passion of, I still get to wake up in the morning and talk about sports all day and get paid to do it. For me, I love telling stories. Like I loved advertising, I loved television commercials and I always, sports was a thing for me, like obviously being an athlete. But what's kept me there is the fact that as, as marketers, mm -hmm. we get to tell these amazing stories and we get to connect on such emotional levels. It is also an awesome responsibility. We have the ability to bring issues to the forefront. We have the ability to you know, have conversations on the national and international level, but we also have the ability to create a moment for a young child or a family courtside before the game that's going to have an impact on their lives forever and ever. And sports is fun. If I'm gonna make the trade off to leave my house, to leave my kids, um, it's better to be a really, really good one. One of the best pieces of information I ever received was from another intern when I was interning at Fox Sports Southwest. And he and I were talking about some ego-related something that a broadcaster had done. And he goes, sports is celebrating other people's accomplishments. And that has been the light bulb that has guided me ever since. And so it's always fun to me to, to be able to have that and know, no, we're, we're lifting you up today. We're lifting you up today. And that's, that's always, to me, one of the greatest things about what we do. Well, I want to thank each of you for coming and contributing. There is still a lot of work to be done. I'm confident with this group of ladies and those that we're supporting and lifting up that we'll get it done. So to creating more paths, to bringing women in the next generation with us. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.